Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, um, we, got, we, we got this super chill in the garage, but the, the attention's mainly drawn onto the X5 that I purchased as a new daily driver um, because uh, my wife's been daily driving the E92 ever since she sold the F30. And uh, I've, I've, I've been needing it daily, I'm not gonna lie. Gas price has been absolutely insane lately. And uh, I've been needing something that's more of a parts runner. Um, the truck is a great parts runner. It's amazing, I love driving that thing. But fuel economy on a V8 right now, and that thing's like a 25 to 30 gallon tank. So I ended up spending about $200 to fill up that tank every single time at the pump. And that takes regular gas, not even premium, which is insane. Um, this thing right here is a bigger tank but the fuel economy is almost identical to the 328 surprisingly it is the same motor n52 and i'm assuming because it's an all-wheel drive there's not as much strain onto the engine thus not being terrible in fuel economy i guess that's why the whole all-wheel drive system is not only for off-roading but also uh, for fuel efficiency which is kind of cool so yes the x5 has been an absolute joy to drive and i just want to show you guys everything that i got for this car before i tell you guys about the absolutely bad news that has happened to me with this car so look at over here guys i have stacks and stacks of of parts. I mean, those parts down there has pretty much just been car the, the parts I've been parting out from cars. Like, I have some extra X5 headlights from my part out car. I have a bunch of extra parts from my E91 part out and my X5 part out. Um, so, those are just, you know, buckets of parts for random stuff. I also got an air compressor because you're going to be needing that in the near future. But to direct you guys' attention, I got wider fender flares from our donor car. I got aluminum trim from our donor car, which is very, very, very expensive. So, that is a huge cop as well. We got all the black headliner pieces and everything. We got new switches that allows us to pretty much have heated seats, cooling seats, and massaging seats. And I show you guys that because we didn't actually pull the seats out of my donor car. It was all torn up. It was in terrible shape. But I'll show you guys the thing with that. Um, we got a sports steering wheel upgrade. Um, this is actually heated steering. I'm going to try to retrofit heated steering, but if not, at least we got a sports steering wheel and a sport airbag. And we actually have so many other things back there as well. These are two Amazon mods that I actually got for this thing. It's going to make it look so, so, so good. So I'm stoked for those two as well. I'll show you exactly what kind of seats I got, but I got two fully loaded seats for the X5 and in the trunk I got four fully loaded door panels for that car again we have so much mods I picked up for this thing I've been pretty much just going around to different places trying to get all the mods so in one video I can go ahead and install everything onto this car because I think I just think this would be so satisfying so hopefully that's gonna be the upcoming video um, I'm not gonna cancel plans just because I got screwed over on this car we're gonna end up figuring it out at least it's not the engine that would have been honestly worst comes to worst so now that you guys pretty much get the plans for the car because I do plan on fully restoring this and not only restoring but also upgrading the living baloney out of it um, uh, uh, yeah, I pretty much had high hopes for this. This is the one I paid $5,500 for. Um, he had a smog. That's actually, no, he didn't even have a smog. Um, I actually went to go smog it. I'm going to think about it. I smogged it. How did it pass smog? That is crazy. So, um, no, but he smogged it too. Maybe, maybe I used his smog. I'm not sure. I don't really remember exactly how that went down. Anyways, I, I, could, I could go fight myself later and figure that out later. But I'm pretty sure that when I bought this car, he said this. It is smog certified. Pass smog, no issues. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He gave me a smog certificate. Yes, he did give me a smog certificate. I took it on registration and she told me you don't need smog because it's already smog. So I never wanted to go smog this myself, but the previous owner did. Long story short, unfortunately, um, I think he did a hot smog, mainly because after about, uh, about 200 miles of driving this thing in the city, a check engine light came on, I ran Carly, got no codes. I'm like, okay, maybe it's just like a hiccup. So I cleared it. 200 miles later in the city, got the code again. Um, again, no codes. I just, I can't find, Carly is not finding the code. So I take it out to AutoZone, use one of the free check engine light scanners, and it, he literally looked at me and was like, oh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have two catalytic converters, P0420 and P0420, which is both pretty much um, catalytic converters running under efficiency, um, which basically means that they're either clogged or super dirty, which what most people do is end up replacing it. I'm actually thinking about cleaning it, but honestly, that is a like two or three thousand dollar repair, guys, on a car I paid fifty five hundred dollars for. I didn't even get this one as a steal of a deal like the other two. I got one for a thousand bucks and one for twenty five hundred. I assume this one's gonna be in perfect shape. And I even asked him, I was like, "Hey, is everything good with this car?" He's like, "Dude, I have a full service history." He told me that the car will pass smog, no issues. And uh, he ended up hot smogging it, and he he just he did me dirty. You know, end of the day, I you know I I get everyone's living in hard times right now. It is a struggle to survive with your bills and stuff like that. But to screw over the next person, we're we're all 
all we're all like people, you know, end of the day. And it's just not right that, you know, I, I, I asked them all the questions. Um, obviously, the thing is when you clear the codes on a car um, and you ran the scanner, you can't really tell the codes have been cleared. You just check the codes like, oh, there's a few codes there, um, which I did. And there was nothing that came directly to my attention. Now, I probably should have checked the IMD readiness. That would have probably gave it away, but I didn't, I didn't even think to check that for some reason because then you'll be able to tell if all the systems are ready or not. Now, what is odd right now is if I get in the car and start it up, I'm not going to have any check engine light. It, it keeps, it, it comes and it goes. And I'm assuming that's because every time I drive it for a long period, period of driving because I actually went out for some longer drives uh, probably like 30 45 minute drives and when I come back home and I start it back up the check engine like goes away and I'm assuming that's because the cat gets heated up and it burns off some of the things that are inside of it thus allowing it to actually get better readings and actually uh, pretty much pass the uh, emission thing so unlike my Nissan Titan that when I got that light pretty much I heard metal inside the catalytic converter the cat actually blew out on this X5, I do think um, that we can actually pull these cats out and possibly set it off to get cleaned or something professionally and then possibly put it back in. We're not gonna have any issues. Um, now, obviously, you're moving catalytic converters on a car like this, the X5s, they're such a pain in the butt because of the all-wheel drive system and all the parts are super heavy and they're in the way um, and they're also part of the header. They're not just a cat, they're part of the header, um, which is, is a pain, it's an absolute pain. Now, moral of the story is, I, 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 this is one of those videos I just wanna upload so I kinda just warn some of you guys. Um, there are a lot of scamming going on recently. There was another YouTube channel that I just watched recently. I forgot their name, um, but they uploaded a uh, video picking up a Supra from Copart. They got it for $20,000, which I, for those of you guys who watch my videos, I picked up mine for $38,000, um, which is like $18,000 more than his. Like that's my final bid out the door, 38. His final bid out the door was 20, um, but his guys, um, we're talking engine damage, transmission damage, um, differential damage, like undercarriage damage that wasn't even listed and it had the worst undercarriage in the world. Um, like literally the oil panel was busted up inside the engine. It was an absolute joke and every panel was destroyed on that car. Um, actually panels are put put over um, previous existing damage to where basically imagine the quarter panel being pushed in and then they put the panels on top of that to cover up that damage. So honestly when I saw that, my heart sunk to the floor and I felt really bad for them. Um, um, and that's the thing that's crazy about Copart nowadays. You have to, when I say you have to, you have to go look at cars nowadays because people, I guess they're trying to justify it because everyone's trying to justify their, their selfish actions. And they're probably saying, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm struggling right now. I don't deserve this. Um, you know, I, I'm just gonna throw it on auction. And if someone, you know, b because of their own negligence, they didn't go see the car, they, because of their own laziness, they didn't go see the car, they deserve to be screwed over. There are some people that think like that. For me, even with the i three, I exposed all the damage. I did repair a lot of the stuff and there's nothing wrong with repairing a car properly, which is what I did, but I didn't cover up any of the frame damage that was associated. I literally took off the bumper and fully exposed the frame damage and that's how I lost money on the car, but that's how I also felt comfortable when I sold it. Whoever that bought it, whether they want to go look at the car or not, they were able to see the damages and it's okay to lose sometimes. It is definitely okay. As long as you feel good inside and you feel like you didn't scam anybody, that is the win end of the day. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is right now there's a lot of people scamming people and I thought by buying this off of Craigslist checking it out he had a smog on hand no lights on the dashboard I ran the codes everything looked really 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 good but I forgot to run the IMD readiness now uh, for those of you guys who don't know that's like one of those things you can get those cheap $20 scanners from Walmart you plug it into the car and it shows you if the car is ready for smog or not and if it's not ready for smog that's most likely because um, he cleared the codes or the battery died recently but most times if someone cleared the codes, um, even if the battery died, I mean, th th there's a reason to why it died. It probably wasn't driven um, or something. So what I'm trying to say is there's some people that are steeping really, really, really low recently. And I'm just saying be careful because uh, honestly, I, people are willing to do anything to make money, um, even by screwing over the next person. And uh, I just think that's really messed up. Um, also, another another story was crazy. I, I, I'm gonna keep telling you guys stories because this video is all about stories. Um, so you guys know, as I said about the Supra, I felt bad for that. I told them to literally send it back to Copart. They replied. Um, they said they're sending that car back to Copart because that that guys there's no way they can repair it I mean there probably is a possibility but they're gonna be spending way over clean title to repair it because my Supra um, barely any damage as you guys know and it cost me five to, to seven thousand dollars so far repairing that little damage um, and it was nothing it was honestly nothing it was just a quarter panel a door and a side skirt um, so that being said oh yeah some airbags too but they even had a oh, I don't even want to talk about it, it was it was a nightmare if you guys want to check it out type in uh, Supra rebuild on YouTube and you guys will see this other Supra that's yellow also that they picked up from Copart. 
my heart sunk to the floor. It was insane. If I have, if I find a picture of the thumbnail, something I'll throw it up right there. But yeah, not only um did that, those people get scammed through Copart, I got scammed through Craigslist. I also got scammed through Walmart. Now, believe it or not, um there are some people selling through Walmart.com because apparently you can sell your own stuff through Walmart as like a third party. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I noticed that Walmart's website said, "Hey, um JBL speakers on sale." So I was like, "Ooh, speakers on sale. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool." Um, um, so I decided to cop one. This was a back in December. I copped one for my boy Erlan as like a Christmas gift. And uh, I picked one up from walmart.com. It got delivered to my house. I didn't even open the box because I want to keep it looking like it was brand new. I gifted it to my boy Erlan. He was happy about it. Um, months go by. I see him. He has a bigger speaker in the garage. And I was like, what? You don't like this speaker I got you? Pay like 100 bucks for it. He's like, I'm not gonna lie to you, Nor. What did you get this speaker from? And I was like, Walmart, eBay. No, wait, no, Walmart. I said, Walmart. And he's like, are you sure it wasn't eBay? I was like, no, it's Walmart. I pulled up the receipt, showed up, purchased it from Walmart. He's like, bro, I gotta show you something. He showed me this speaker. It had literally no logos on the speaker. And the speaker sounded like, you know, it, it came out of a, I don't even know how to explain it. It, it was like so muffled. It, it wasn't clear whatsoever. It sounded like, absolute garbage and the packaging literally didn't show any logos either so i didn't check it again because once that walmart box got delivered to my front door i took it i reboxed it gave it to um gave it to my boy as a gift and assuming that i bought it from walmart i just assumed everything was gravy in the navy how can you get scammed on walmart but apparently you can get scammed on walmart nowadays Amazon, eBay, anywhere, literally any website, because even Walmart is starting to take third party people and people are, you know, they're just out skimming people. It's really, really, really low. Um, the best I could do, because this was months later after return period, I contacted Walmart. I just wanted them to pretty much take down that account. The dude had a literally one star review, 30 items sold, and he just scammed pretty much 30 people for speakers. He probably paid $5 for it and charged $100. He made, it's a get rich scheme scam, and he's thinking, hey, because of their negative negligence or whatever, um, they deserve to be scammed. There's always people that are doing wrong in this world that are trying to justify their actions, which I think is so, so, so wrong. Uh, but anywho, but anywho, I'm just telling you guys what recently happened and, uh, I, and I, I, went to, I went ahead and just junked at the speaker, picked up Erlan a new speaker, and uh, it sucks because I basically paid um, twice as much, $200 for a speaker that cost $100 and I bought it through Walmart. Like, isn't that, doesn't that feel shitty? But end of the day, um, I even felt embarrassed to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just gonna keep talking because I felt embarrassed that my friend thought that I went to eBay and, or, or like some guy locally paid him five or 10 bucks for a cheap speaker, gave it to him, pretending it was an expensive speaker. I, I felt like I, I didn't value my friend as much, if you guys know what I mean. When you buy someone something from like an aftermarket, like China fake product, like imagine you, you buy your friend or your mom or whatever an iPhone, but you get them a China iPhone to where it doesn't even log into your iCloud. It's, it's, like, it's just a very, very cheap one that's like 100 or 200 bucks, the iPhone 13 Pro Max for like 100 and 200 bucks and it performs so badly. It's just kind of a bad gift if you guys know what I mean. And it also shows um, how you feel about that person in my opinion. If someone gave me um, a very, very, very cheap China product, I feel like, what is this, is this a joke? Like, I don't know, because obviously, what are you gonna do with it? You can't do anything with it. It's just, it's, it's garbage, straight up. So anyhow, anyhow, Walmart, everywhere, getting scammed. Just be cautious out there, guys. I honestly, I, I wish I can give you more warnings. For Copart, go check out the cars um, through Craigslist, bring all your scan tools, and through Walmart, just buy from Walmart. Don't buy from third-party sellers. Like honestly, don't even order from their website because there's so so many third-party um, sellers and you can see it in the bottom, bottom, bottom. It'll show like a different seller's name under the item, but just to be safe, just, just buy it from Walmart, the store itself. Now, anywho, now I do have some good news. This video is full of bad news. I do have some good news. I've been working on something for, uh, for, for a little bit, trying to get some money together on the side um, to start working on our backyard. For those of you guys who don't know, I pretty much got a violation working in my own garage. The other day, the, 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 the code enforcement came up and he's like, I already gave you a ticket. You've only been here like less than six months. And I gave you a ticket for your lawn, which I completely understand. You gotta mow your lawn. But then he also gave me a ticket for the i3 on the you know, the bottom end of my driveway completely disassembled, which I was like, you know what, that makes sense too, because it looks, the car is fully disassembled in the bottom of the driveway. It does kind of degrade the area, if you guys know what I mean. So I was like, all right, I'll take that ticket too. But I was working in my garage on the 640i engine swap in my garage, not a single part outside the garage. And he comes up to me and literally comes out of his car and he's like, you have two violations. You know, if I give you another one, the second one, the first one is a warning. The second one's gonna be $2,500 to $5,000 ticket for working on something bigger than an oil change in your garage. And I was like, what? 
I'm not even paying HOA fees. You know, taking me $2,500 to $5,000. So I had to close the garage. We had to finish the job inside the garage. And sometimes on weekends, I'll pop up in the garage because they're not working on weekends. And it's just not a way to live. I bought this house so I have the freedom to do whatever I want. And it looks like I don't. So that really, really, really sucks. Again, some more bad news. So I decided to do the executive decision and uh, buy concrete. So I went ahead and bought some concrete. And they're actually going to be pouring it later today in the backyard. So I'm going to be showing that hopefully when they get here. Um, but um, as for now, let me show you guys the prep work that's been done. So yes, I do have the E91 just chilling here. The car cover came off. I need to put that car cover back on. Um, but yeah, this is basically just chilling here because really I haven't really had time to work on it. Plus nor this space. I do want to get this thing up and pretty much just take off all the bottom end of the suspension, everything from the interior, completely strip it down um, and actually have the car that I, like the donor car next to it and do the exact same thing. And that is the reason why I actually started working on the backyard guys. So I don't know if you guys noticed with my side yard, I actually have this side gate that goes to my home and I can actually drive cars through to my backyard. Now, obviously, I don't want to leave cars here. My wife's going to get super upset. But in the meantime, at least having all this space, I could put two cars back to back and actually take apart both of them completely and work on them and not have any issues. The gate is closed. Everything's going to be grave in the Navy. Um, so this entire section from the house itself to about a foot off the gate. So for legality reasons, this is all going to be concrete, which is going to be super nice. And that little section back there next to the gate, I'm actually going to put some kind of tools and stuff like that. Just some like small tools. I don't want things outside getting rained on and rusted and stuff like that. But yeah, we finally got all the prep work done. Um, um, I hired a team for something like this. I'm not a professional with concrete. I don't want to end up pouring concrete and it ends up cracking and you know messing up. I do want this as a workspace, especially with putting cars on it. We're not walking on this, putting cars on it. So I want this concrete to be as stable as possible. So that being said, guys, the guys are coming hopefully in the next hour or two to actually start pouring concrete. So I'll check back at you guys when they actually get here. And a couple days later guys we finally have the concrete just rested we have two ramps back here two ramps over there. those are temporary ramps but check out that concrete i am just so 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 happy we finally have an area to get some work done right now and that just looks so 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 good especially the breeze and everything it's such a good day god bless now the situation with the x5 is unfortunate but thankfully it is not worse comes to worst um i literally been driving the last couple of days and honestly the check engine light has not came back since i put in fuel cleaner um and that just really basically means that the catalytic converters are dirty not blown uh not not like an actual major issue it is obviously a major issue but i don't think it needs to be replaced i just think that they need to be cleaned out still kind of a lengthy process still kind of a pricey process process maybe around five six hundred bucks possibly up to a thousand dollars but i mean definitely better than replacing them unlike my uh nissan titan those ones had it get replaced so um I mean, I haven't even replaced it because the cheapest one I could find is like 2000 a piece and it needs two of them. So thankfully that is not the case. Um, it, it doesn't sound like there's any issues with it. It just seems like it's a little bit dirty. And if you throw in some fuel cleaner stuff or some uh, catalytic converter stuff, it'll probably end up cleaning it in the long term. Fingers crossed, guys. Wish me luck. If you guys know any ways to clean catalytic converters, even taking it out, let me know down below. We might have to actually just remove them, clean it ourselves. But in the meantime, guys, I'm just so, so, so stoked. The concrete people told me, unfortunately, that I could not work on this concrete for at least another 10 days but once those 10 days pass guys 
it's gonna be insane because then we can start doing some crazy projects like the E91 build on this and we can finally do whatever we want without getting in trouble, which is gonna be super dope. If you guys are excited to see the E91 build and the X5 build, make sure to smash that like button. The X5 build is coming in the next video, hopefully a complete transformation and it's gonna be a real jam-packed video. So if you guys are excited for that, again, make sure to smash that like button. Let's get this video to a thousand likes. Without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay on, see you on the next one. Peace out.